Why is the Statue of Liberty green? Well, in short, because its outer skin is made of copper. Now to address one thing first. It's a beautiful day outside, so yes, I'm in a t-shirt and not a shirt. Now let's get down to the important business. Copper isn't green though, is it? It's a lovely orangey colour, sort of like my beard. But then, if it was to be left open in air, it might oxidise. But copper oxide isn't green either, is it? It's a dark black. So what's going on with the Statue of Liberty? Well, a very interesting set of processes are leading to a very nice little compound forming called basic copper carbonates or sulfates or chlorides. It's a little bit complicated. But I'm a chemist and I like making things. So I thought it would be really good fun to make a little bit of this compound, albeit a bit quicker than the five to 30 years it takes for the metal to corrode. But we'll make a little bit and then we'll have a look at it. Now a lovely method to prepare one of these basic copper uh, salts was demonstrated in 1927 by a chap called Jack Hepburn and I've put the reference to his paper in the description if you'd like to have a look at it. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making copper carbonate, basic copper carbonate and rather than using metallic copper like on the Statue of Liberty we're actually going to be using a water soluble form of copper. This is copper sulfate. Now it should be noticed that this is actually quite unpleasant to handle but it's also quite difficult to, to uh, dispose of because it's dangerous to aquatic life so it can't go down the sink. Now I have two and a half grams of copper sulfate dissolved in about 15 millilitres of water here and I've got um, one gram of sodium carbonate dissolved in three millilitres of water, not three millilitres of water, what am I talking about? 20 millilitres of water. Now, I shouldn't need all of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add the carbonate, the sodium carbonate, to the copper sulphate solution. I want to see, watch closely, and see if you can see what's going to happen. Can you see that precipitate for me? As it drips in, that's, that's the basic copper carbonate forming. Now let me add a bit more. There we go. And I'll swirl this a little bit to mix it. If you look closely on the side, you can see there's some bubbles. You can maybe see it, just a little bit of bubbling. Now, what's going on in this reaction? Well, two molecules of copper sulfate are reacting with two molecules of sodium carbonate and one molecule of water. And this results in two molecules of the very water-soluble sodium sulfate being formed one molecule of the insoluble, that means it won't dissolve, uh, copper carbonate, and note the two OH groups in the copper carbonate, or hydroxide groups, that's what makes it basic, and one molecule of carbon dioxide gas, and that's the bubbling that we saw a little bit, you can see a little bit down at the sides, now I'm just going to add a little bit of water to this, just to make it a bit easier to handle. Now, the actual green colour that will be on the Statue of Liberty will be a combination of different copper salts. So there'll be a little bit of this carbonate, but also because it's in an urban area, a built-up area, you get a lot of um, sulphur compounds in the atmosphere, and they lead to sulphuric acid formation. 
and that leads to copper sulfates forming. So rather than it necessarily being a basic carbonate, it could also be a basic sulfate. And near seawater, which of course the Statue of Liberty is, you get basic chlorides as well, basic copper chlorides. So what we're going to do is we're going to let this sit for a little while so that all the copper sulfate can react and then we'll clean it up and have a look at the colour. So we're just going to filter this through some kitchen roll in here. So I'll pour that in. You can see that the solution coming through is still very blue, so I should have waited for longer to allow this reaction to go to completion. Because there's still copper sulfate in that solution. So here's the basic copper carbonate leave it to dry on this piece of kitchen roll. It might take one or two days to dry. So we'll come back after that. Right, well it's been two days of drying now. We've had some lovely weather so it's dry very quickly. And the first thing we can notice about this is that it's got that beautiful rich bluey green colour that we can see on the Statue of Liberty. And if I was to just crush it a little bit find it makes a lovely powder. Makes a lovely powder. Now, this isn't just used on those copper type statues, though people use it because it has that lovely colour. It's also used to make pigments in, and paints for artists. And in chemistry, it's used as a catalyst. I hope you really enjoyed this video. It's a bit of a short one, but it's an exciting topic. And if you did enjoy this, why not check out some of our other videos? Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.